the record. Great. So let me open up the screen and we'll take a look at what's going on for assignments right now. Okay, hopefully it's it's still spinning. Oh, there it is, kind of, I think. Okay, yay, sharing the screen. Okay, I know the the, uh, the website's had a few challenges this past um, week or so, uh, off and on. I think they're there i think the it department has has mastered uh, the solutions for the problems so let me open up assignments i i could do modules maybe it'll be modules um modules let's go down here to a week i'm giving a couple of students a chance to submit their their revised essay um so that way i could take a look at it okay so here i have notes and revised outline due week 15 and then next week will be the final draft revised draft and then week 17 we'll have the timed in class essay and i posted uh under announcements last week uh some handouts that'll help with the uh timed in class essay so why that's going to work because it's an online environment is i'm going to open up the tab and it'll be open for 24 hours so so uh hopefully you'll have a chance to log in and complete the writing assignment and then submit it and that way I can take a look at it. Um, I figure that by by next Friday or so I should have um, everyone's timed in class essay. I think I'm opening up the tab on the 26th. Let me take a look at it. Yeah, so I'm going to start it on May 26th, and then I'll close it on Friday, May 27th. And the uh, material I put in the in the announcement last week should help you with that. Then the following week is the final research essay, which is due by May 27th. And that should uh, then also post it here on their page, the reverse outline, uh, which you need to do for the assignment. Which is due now, and I think there's only been uh, a few students that have completed that. Let me look at my dashboard. Okay, All right, so I'm giving those that are getting caught up a chance to finish that and I'll take a look at it. Get everything done. Well, hopefully you were um, successful with your peer review process. I'm hoping that helped you. Um, I think sometimes it's a lot easier to uh talk to a fellow student about the assignment and get some honest candid feedback that is understandable and then you can then apply what you learned from that peer review into revising your essay i wish the class was in person because i'd have you read your essay aloud to your partner <coughs> i think that really helps um that said um i haven't done it in an online environment yet um so if you had the technology on your laptop or your computer to record you or to do a live stream, that would be really helpful. It, it's invaluable reading your essay aloud. It really helps. 
Um, it helps, I think, as much, if not more, than when you do the reverse outline. Um, so I'm hoping you're going to look at that. Uh, let's open up, uh, open up the announcements from last week for the timed in class essay, which is going to be next uh, Thursday, Friday, and go over that assignment. So hopefully you can see what's uh, loading on the screen. Let's go back and see what's happening. Why is not loading? There it is, great. Okay, um, so this should help you with the timed in class essay. Um, it's still a requirement for uh, CSUs and UCs um, to have some sort of timed writing assignment. It depends on you know if you're going to be a junior or senior um, when that will take place, but that's still still a requirement. I know that the the um, uh, requirements to uh, enter a college have changed somewhat. There's some discussion on whether or not test scores will be uh, required or not. But as far as uh, completing the four-year degree, the timed writing assignment is still considered valuable um, because it sort of summarizes all that you've learned in your writing courses. And um, as you probably know by now, writing an essay is part of, of most class assignments or at least writing something right even if it's only uh, paragraphs or an outline i had one student for example who was in one of my writing classes and was in the rotc program and was going to become a reserve officer and i i uh, connected with him probably a year after he finished my class and he was indeed now um, um, employed by the police department. And he found that the writing assignments in the class helped him a lot in writing uh, his reports, whether it was a traffic stop or an incident or some uh, whatever scene that he was uh, called to to uh, write up a report on. But his writing reports on what happened um, was based on what he learned in the writing courses. So writing is a skill that you apply to other other um, avenues, other other um, genres, other arenas, other work environments. Um, so it is helpful. So for the timed in class essay, let's open up the first handout. This one is the outline for timed essays, and I think I added some additional information on this one. Maybe I need to download this for some reason. Not sure why it's taking so long. That's, that's spinning. Okay. I guess it's my Google Chrome that's taking a while. Um, let's try it again. Oh, here it comes. Okay, great. So I had I um, this is sort of a um, a mixture of of uh, tips I received from other instructors and what would help in this writing assignment. Um, so in the blue box, there's sort of, sort of directive questions to help you um, look at your writing and answer them. So does this sentence add information? use moreover furthermore additionally so um, when you're trying to add more information does the sentence contrast or contradict 
So you can use the following words, however. Um, are you writing something that happens in order? Then you may want to use next, then. Uh, does the sentence add evidence? Then you use a signal phrase like, for example, consequently. Does the sentence emphasize an idea? Maybe you use something like obviously or especially or as a rule. Um, there's also a list of transition words to help when you're trying to move from one topic or one sub subtopic to a supporting detail, a supporting uh, piece of evidence, a supporting um, quote or reference. Uh, so you need to sort of transition from this place to that place where that source is. So there's a list of transition words. I uh, use a variety of words when citing examples. So this is helpful, sort of a signal phrase, telling the reader that you're going to now include a piece of evidence. And this is why this evidence is valuable. It, it's cited. Um, so you're going to have it on a works cited page, although in a time writing assignment, you won't have a works cited page. But you can reference you know, um, a source, uh, uh, an authority um, that uses an example. Use different words to order events or sequence of time. Use interesting words in summarizing. Um, okay, so and then you have sort of these questions to ask. Once you come up with a working thesis, you can use the following questions to evaluate it. Does your thesis answer a question, propose a solution to a problem, or take a position in a debate? Does the thesis require a uh, essay's worth of development? Will you run out of points too quickly? Is the thesis too obvious? If you cannot come up with an interpretation that opposes your own, consider revising it. Can you support your thesis with the evidence available? Right. So we all have a, a finite amount of knowledge. So I don't recommend that you have a thesis statement that's going to require knowledge that's beyond your grasp. Um, so make sure your thesis statement is grounded in what you do know. Can you explain why readers will want to read an essay with a thesis? Can you respond with when a reader asks, so what, or so why is this important, or why should I care? The so what response. Um, here's some sentence frames. Uh, frames are, are give students a chance to use key vocabulary. To increase the complexity of the sentence, we change the frame to incorporate a different structure and high level academic terms. There's some sentence starters, some sam sample signal phrases. You may want to print out and study signal phrases. You can Google them, get a list of 20 or so. Uh, signal phrases are, are those, they're, they're kind of like prepositional phrases. They're before the key piece of, of evidence or example or anecdote that you want to use. And they tell the reader that this information coming up is important. And the signal phrase characterizes in sort of a general sense um, something about that piece of evidence. So let's go back and look at the top again. So every essay is going to have a title. The title should be original, should be suggestive of what the essay is about. There needs to be a hook within the first sentence or two that is going to grab the reader's attention. Uh, and that hook is going to have either a fact, a figure, an anecdote, it could be a turn of phrase, could be a contradiction. Um, next, we're going to have some background information that's going to help set up the thesis statement. It's going to give the thesis statement something to reference, something to build on, something to step off from to go into the essay itself. So think about the context it needs to have some of the W, certainly when and certainly where, and probably the who and probably the what. The why is probably going to be examined in the essay itself and the how is going to be examined in the essay. But so the context information, your opening paragraph, you should have a when, you should have a where, you should have a who, and you should have a what. Then you have your rough draft thesis. So that's all in the very first paragraph. Um, I recommend your thesis statement be one sentence. There are some professors that um, are okay with having two sentences. 
I think having a period in the middle of the thesis statement uh, breaks it up and doesn't make it do what it's supposed to do, which is pivot to three different places. First is the problem. The second pivot is how authority is reacting to it, to this problem, what they suggest should be done with it or how to address it. And the third pivot is what your opinion is, what you, the writer of this essay, is going to argue. So you got three points, three pivots, uh, three places you're going to within the thesis statement. So if you break it up into two sentences, um, I fear that the continuity of moving from point A to point B to point C, from problem to reaction to opinion, is going to be broken up. So I recommend using a single sentence for your thesis statement. Um, I also highly recommend using a subordinate like although uh, to start your thesis statement. The although is a is a single phrase that we all recognize as signaling that something's going to happen that's not exactly what is expected or what is hoped for, but we've been there before, right? The, 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 you know, the, the overused examples are, although you studied a great deal for this exam, right? The next part is going to be, um, uh, I'm sorry that you won't pass or something like that. So I think all those are great way a great way of starting a thesis statement, and I highly recommend it. Um, your following paragraphs are go going to be like the corners of a table. They're each going to have a topic, like a, a table leg that supports that tabletop. So imagine that tabletop is also your thesis statement. So there's some balance to it. Um, and I, this also gives you a chance to break out of the habit of making a five paragraph essay, which is what you're taught in high school, but doesn't really apply in college. Um, so you can have an opening paragraph that introduces the, the topic and the context of the topic and your thesis statement. You're gonna have the body of the essay that's gonna have four subtopics and each of those subtopics, each of those paragraphs is gonna have a single topic within the single topic sentence for each of those paragraphs. And then you're going to have a concluding paragraph that summarizes and predicts where this discussion is going to go. So that gives you at least six solid paragraphs to work with. Um, I think it's a strong way of, of, uh, of beginning an essay, looking at ma making at least six paragraphs. Each paragraph should have at least five to seven sentences. Each paragraph is going to have a topic sentence, which is on the screen here. Each paragraph is going to have supporting details, examples, or analysis. And those examples and analysis uh, could be in-text citations. For your essays, you need to have at least two in-text citations per paragraph. And the in-text citation could be a summary, a paraphrase, or a direct quote. Um, but in all three cases, you're still going to have to cite the source. So you have the, the um, Will Norton Reader as a source. And you may have additional essays outside that. You could even have the OER as a source. So in each paragraph, you can have at least two in-text citations. And you can summarize, paraphrase, or use a direct quote for those uh, sources. And then do you have a concluding sentence that summarizes this paragraph and then transitions to the next paragraph, sets up the next paragraph. So every paragraph is going to have that except for the, the um, the, the, la the last paragraph, which is going to go into the concluding paragraph. So let's take a look at the next paragraph. So all the paragraphs two and three and four are all, all the same. And I've had you look at the outline a few times now. The concluding paragraph is summarizing the main points, it restates the thesis, and has some sort of prediction quality to it. Um, so you need to sort of summarize and predict in your concluding paragraph. The discussion on this topic that you are arguing in your essay is going to be discussed again. It's not the end of the discussion. Um, your essay is, is proposing one perspective on dealing with that problem, whatever it is, um, but someone is going to come up with a different way of replying, responding to the problem, or they're going to argue against your position and make an argument why your position is invalid. Or they're going to take your argument and add to it and make it an even further 
uh, uh, make it even more robust. So your concluding paragraph is going to summarize the main points of your essay, and it's also going to predict where this discussion could go, where it might go, where it will go. So uh, think of a future tense word like will in your concluding paragraph. I don't know this before. So that's that. Let me close this. Next one is the outline for timed essays. Okay, that's the same thing. Close that. Timed in class instructions. Okay, so this is the rubric. It gives you a sense of what a really good solid essay is going to be. It's going to be, uh, it's going to have minor flaws and a flaw is spelling. A flaw is a verb tense. A flaw is gra grammatical error. A flaw could be something mechanical like capitalization or common use. A flaw could be um, misuse of punctuation like colon, semicolon, uh parentheses dashes so forth um a superior essay is going to address the topic clearly and your prompt for the in-class essay is going to give you um uh, a brief two or three four sentence scenario and that's going to ask you specifically to do something in response to it either to cite examples or to give some personal opinion or to state, do you agree or disagree? So you need to address the topic clearly in your response and a superior essay is going to do that. Um, a superior essay is going to demonstrate a thorough critical understanding of the prompt in developing an insightful response. So a thorough critical understanding is going to be a position that has specifics and details, not I agree, it's a really good idea, which doesn't tell us anything about the topic or how you feel about it. So you need to be specific. If you believe, for example, um, what's one thing, something that's happening right now? Ah, so next year, um, tuition is going up in several colleges, at several colleges. So you could argue that tuition rates should not increase. That if it's going to increase, you know, 4.9 or 5.3%, uh, that that is unfair. So you could argue that a fair, uh, increase would be 1.2 and why? So you're going to compare 1.2 increase versus 5.4, for example, or that um, college should be free and you're going to give examples on why college should be free, what the benefits of college are and why it should be free. So going back to what's on the screen here, uh, B demonstrates a thorough critical understanding of the prompt and developing an insightful response. You need to have in your response specifics that are critical uh, that display critical analysis, critical understanding of the prompt, and also <clears throat> what you think is an insightful way of responding to it. C, explores the issue thoroughly, <coughs> thoughtfully, and in depth. Right, so not just, I, I agree, it's a good idea, um, that would be really um, nice. Those are not specifics. So think of the problem and think of what kind of specifics you want to add to that. Um, D is coherently organized and developed with ideas supported by app reasons and well-chosen examples. I'm repeating myself here. Um, I said this before, so coherently organized. So look at your outline and are you moving uh, logically from topic to topic to topic? That's coherent. Uh, does it make sense that you're arguing um, against, um, uh, for example, in, in, in Costa Mesa, there's a big um, uh, saline, saline um, plant that is extracting salt from ocean water to make more uh, drinkable water for the area. So um, if that's the problem, if that's the topic that you're asked to respond to, for example, about the saline uh, processing plant in Costa Mesa, California, um, your outline is going to show you, are you addressing that prompt? Are you responding to it? Or are you talking all, uh, are you talking about drinking water in general and not specifically about the saline, the saline um, reduction plant, the processing plant in Costa Mesa? 
So you need to look at your prompt, make sure that it's coherently organized. Your essay response is coherently organized in response to it. Your outline will help with that. Uh, make sure you have well-chosen examples that connect to that prompt. So again, if your prompt is dealing with um, the avocado industry and you have examples about the almond industry, it doesn't make sense. Why are you talking about almonds when the essay prompt is asking you about avocado, for example? Next, make sure you have an effective fluid style marked by syntax variety and a clear command of language. So uh, a fluid style is where the sentences are not just um, always seven words. Sometimes there are four words, sometimes there's 10 words, sometimes there's three commas, sometimes there's two. You can, uh, when you read them aloud, you'll hear the sounds of the words. Do you wanna use uh, parallel structure? Do you want to have any kind of, of alliteration, assonance? Those are where the sounds are similar to each other. Assonance or vowel sounds are like one another. Alliterations where you have consonant sounds. Sally sells seashells by the seashore, right? You have that S sound, the consonant sound. Um, mo, ro, ro, lo has the vowel sound of the O. So a style is not only the uh, number of words in a sentence. It's also, if there's alliteration or assonance, it's also what kind of construction is it? Is it parallel structure, for example, where you have a series of three things that are like one another in response to something? Uh, make sure you have a clear command of the language. Again, reading aloud is going to prepare you for this. Uh, so you can hear, does the language make sense? Next one is generally free from errors in grammar usage and mechanics. So a superior essay is going to have those qualities, those characteristics, free from those minor sentence level errors like grammar usage and mechanics. That's verb tense, that's comma use, that's punctuation, um, that's a subject verb agreement. Uh, make sure you don't have any kind of pronoun confusion errors, things like that. Uh, fluent style, clear command of language, well chosen examples, it's thoughtful, it's in depth, it's coherent, it's uh, very critical and it's thorough. It's insightful and it responds to the topic directly. So let's see if I can pull up on, let me go through this one more time. That, this is one more handout. It could be the same one. Oh, it's a little different. Okay, let's take a look at this one. So this is for the time writing techniques for success. Everyone knows that an essay needs a clear thesis, supporting paragraphs with specific examples and language that is exact and effective. What everyone doesn't know, though, is how to include all those elements when time is short. So we have the, the constraints of having a clock ticking while you're writing. You need to look at the prompt, look at your time, and figure out what you can do within the time allotted. If they give you an hour, then you need to design uh, an outline that's going to be suitable for an hour's worth of writing. If they give you three hours or four hours in a longer, bigger assignment, like the end of a semester exam, where you're supposed to uh, summarize many, many issues brought up during that semester, you may have a three or four hour writing exam, um, for example. Um, so look at your, your prompt, look what you have to do, and look at your time frame. Understand the questions being um, asked of you. And again, look at the specifics in that prompt. Right? Is it asking you to agree or disagree, challenge, compare, contrast, compare and contrast, right? Those three things, compare is one thing, contrast is something else, and compare and contrast is something totally different. When you're comparing, you're just outlining the similarities. When you're contrasting, you're looking at the differences. When you're doing both, you're looking at the similarities and the differences, but make sure you don't use the word similarity differences more than once. Um, your reader needs to see specifics, not how you're telling them what it is, but you worry that you're showing them. So that's something I've noticed um, over the years is that when there's a compare contrast essay, often students will use the words similar and use the word difference repeatedly throughout the essay. Uh, I don't want to read how it's similar. I want you to show me how there's a similarity between the two things you're comparing. I don't want to see the differences. I don't want you to tell me there's differences. I want you to show me the differences by showing me what is different about one topic versus the other topic. 
that there's a debate. If you need to define and uh, the define or definition essay is where you look at, at specific examples of how things are defined. Um, for example, look at slang, like the word lit, right? Lit used to refer to um, uh, shining a light onto something. Lit um, has been used in the terms of how a party is fun and enjoyable, uh, for example. Um, or bad, right? Bad used to mean something that was not good. Um, and that's another way of defining something is by opposites. But bad used to be something that was not sought after. But now bad can sometimes be something that has a characteristic of, of uh, enticing, alluring, um, um, attractive, even. Um, illustrate, as we're making a point, use specific, specific, specific examples to support it. Identify parallels. This is a, a phrase for synonym or for compare, discuss and complain, or discuss or explain. Uh, these terms are a little bit vague. Uh, discuss um, is nothing more than, than a written exploration of how these topics that you're exploring in your essay are interacting with each other. Uh, and you can also explain why these topics are interacting with each other. Um, for example, if you want to explain the uh, correlation between the rising um, uh, oil prices and the price of gasoline, or it's going to um, explain the correlation between the uh, federal uh, tax rate um, and inflation, or you're going to explain um, why college is an important factor in uh, having a productive life. Uh, for example, you explain, right? You're trying to give reason to something. Um, you have planning, you have editing and proofreading, you've got the writing process itself. So again, be aware of the time, make sure you plot out your time appropriately, give yourself time to process the prompt, do a, a mind map if that helps you, or, or a Venn diagram or cluster uh, ideas, and then you can sort of organize them into an outline. Um, so that's that prompt, and it's gonna show you something. Um, oh, and looking at uh, some sample writing prompts. Somebody look over here, and Okay. Okay, here's one for I don't know who that is, so I won't play it. Okay, here. Uh, this is Sacramento.
Okay. Oh, here it is. Okay, I'm going to go a different direction. Okay, so here's GRE scores. Let me have something. GRE stands for graduate. Um, okay, so the analysis issue, the rubrics. No. It's still the same thing. Okay, this could work. Um, this is sort of what's part of it when you have a timed exam. Uh, you have a proctor there, someone who's been hired to supervise and watch over. It's done for the writing exam, um, which is when you are completing your undergraduate required a writing course. Um, so you got some pencils, maybe uh, check with your school and blue books yeah usually blue books are provided um that way you don't bring in your own essays uh the scoring is usually read by two readers this i, I did this for a while um yeah, i forgot four years probably five years maybe um scores okay the reading uh, area three comprehension okay grammar punctuation the scoring guide. Okay, I, you already saw this. Let me see if I can find some prompts. 
Okay, so here's one. This is called suggestions for 60 minute time writing. Okay, so the first two to five minutes read the prompt and underline keywords. That's very helpful. Next, make an outline. I talked about that before. Next 40 minutes or so, write the essay, skipping every other line and write only on the right uh, on the right page. Um, so not on the back side of the page, only on the face face of the page. That'll give you a chance to come back later and either add in between the lines words or phrases that are that uh, were accidentally omitted, um, or put a line through words you don't want to use and then replace it with other words and then gives you five ten minutes at the end to proofread and revise any things you want to do uh you know if you're a slow and a deliberate writer you may want to um, um make adjustments to this schedule so again they're recommending that the first two to five minutes you underline keywords in the prompt next five minutes make an outline and hopefully you've been practicing making an outline by now then you got 40 minutes for writing the essay Right, so you've got like keywords, you know what you're writing about. You made the outline, you know where how the essay is going to be structured, the topics, the the supporting points you're trying to make. Then you write the essay, they come back and proofread. If you know that you're a slow and deliberate writer, you may want to make some adjustments or saying maybe not give much time for editing, so you can at least get the essay written. Um, that said, if if the essay is half, half written, meaning that you've only addressed 50% of the prompt, then the highest grade possible is a 50%, right? So be aware that you need to completely respond or respond completely to the prompt. If the prompt is asking for three examples, give three examples. If the uh, prompt is asking you to say yes or no, then state yes or no. If the prompt is asking you to argue um, a position in contrast to something, then you need to complete that task. So if you only complete 50% of the task of the prompt, your highest grade is going to be 50%. So be aware of that. So, um, so if you know what kind of writer you are, take into consideration how you respond to something and what you can um, do to make it work for you. Okay, you're going to get one prompt. Okay, the prompt is going to identify a topic, the subject matter to be discussed and a specific task of what is to be done with that subject. The prompt will either call for creation of an argument or ask you to compare and contrast a specific subject. I understand the topic. And then make a copy of this and I'll, I'll add this to I'll add this to the announcement. Okay, uh, circle of words indicate the topic of the question. Glance back at these circle of words while writing the essay to double check that you are remaining on topic. I referenced that earlier. Uh, underline the task. So you have underlined keywords, circle the words that indicate the topic of the question. Then you have the task itself. And be aware of the language that's used in the task, right? If there are directives such as give you know three examples, make sure you find all of the tasks, usually two to three tasks. Common directives are things like analyze, which means not just summarize, but analyze means deconstruct and take apart. If you're going to compare, that's talking about similarities. If you're going to contrast, that's talking about the differences. If you're going to define, that's talking about definitions or um, boundaries or, or um specific spaces this thing exists in um describe is to paint with with sensory details right think about your sensory response by color smell um sound so forth discuss literally means to talk about evaluate looks at the value of something explains makes it show the connection between things right Rain causes flooding. Flooding causes homes to get mold. Moldy homes causes the property values to go down and cause expensive repairs, right? So you have this progression, this sort of linear development. 
identify, you know, I'm repeating to myself, this is already in your other prompt. Let's take a look at a couple of prompts. Okay, here's a prompt, for example. Okay, there is no doubt, and I'm reading the prompt aloud, it's on the screen here as well. Uh, this is an example prompt. Um, you probably won't see this. Uh, there is no doubt that America is a melting pot, semicolon. By the same token, there is no doubt that most members of specific races and nationalities strive their whole lives to maintain a link with their original ethnic identity and culture. The two impulses, blending into American society and maintaining ethnic identity, are not always compatible. Okay, so notice that they're saying, this prop here is saying that these things are not compatible. So you could make a note of that. Uh, you may want to revisit that statement uh, in your essay. You may want to. I'm not recommending that you do. I'm saying you may want to. This is a position the prompt is, is stating, right? So you want to be able to identify what the prompt is doing and how you're going to respond to it. This is one of the things that the prompt is doing. It is stating are not always compatible. Um, often, success is interpreted as total immersion in and assimilation by the new culture. Another strong statement, right? Do you agree or disagree with this assumption? Right. So these are two statements, two assumptions made by this prompt. It's asking in a directive, do you agree or disagree? So what are you going to do in your essay? You're going to say, I agree with or I disagree with. Um, then, so that's one, one task, right? Do you agree or disagree? That's one task. Next task is argue, right? And an argument is where you use examples and evidence to support your opinion. So you're gonna argue for a lifestyle that emphasizes assimilation or a lifestyle that emphasizes the maintenance of cultural ties, right? So there's an or not both, right? So in your essay, you're going to either emphasize assimilation or you're gonna argue or emphasize the maintenance of cultural ties, not both. If you do both, it's wrong, right? Because that's why they underline or in this prompt. That's how or is underlined right here. So you're gonna argue for assimilation or you're gonna argue for maintenance of cultural ties. <clears throat> And then, right, so that's task one, agree or disagree. Task two is make an argument for a lifestyle. And then three is indicate which lifestyle is better, which indicate, uh, indicate which lifestyle better leads to success in the American culture, right? So if you think that maintenance of the cultural ties leads to success in America, you need to explain why that is right so you have agree or disagree you've got an argument for one lifestyle not both and you're going to also indicate by examples right indicate means point two um how this is this lifestyle is going to be um uh, lead to success in the american culture now notice that they use the word success and they use the word compatible and they use the word, um, success twice. So what is success? Um, how are you defining success? So you could read this prompt and put a definition for success. Uh, is success monetary? Is success um, strong family ties? Is success education? Is success respect in the community? Is success a career that has accomplishments, right? So define what success is, is that's part of this discussion, is success in the American culture. What is the American culture? That needs to be defined also. So you have a task, do you agree or disagree? You have a task, argue, make an argument for a lifestyle. You have a task, which means to indicate which lifestyle is better uh, for getting success, better leads to success in the American culture. So you need to define success. You need to also define American culture. And let's go back up here to the top. You need to look at um, specific races and nationalities. And that becomes a little complicated. Um, if, if, for example, um, well, for example, my wife, 
My wife's grandmother is from Ukraine. She's Ukrainian. She was born in Ukraine and she moved to South Dakota. So we feel as a family, as you can tell by the flags behind us, an affinity with Ukraine, but we're not Ukrainian. Um, and my wife is, is, since her mother was born here, she's really only about 25% Ukrainian if you want to get real specific, right? Because her father is not Ukrainian. Her father um, has German heritage. So if you look at members of specific races and nationalities, I think that needs to be teased out in a way to look at, you know, um, can someone who is third or fourth generation um, identify with a nationality or an ethnic race that's other than American? Or is American, right? Now it's a little complicated. You need to explain that with a couple of words, not a whole big paragraph, so you understand what you're going to argue in your essay using this prompt. Um, so you have ethnic identity and culture, right? So is ethnic identity meaning that your 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 name has a, a link to an ethnic uh, group? Um, is it just your name, or do you need to speak the language also? Right. So in my wife's case, does she need to speak Ukrainian to be identified as Ukrainian? Uh, does she need to practice the culture of Ukrainian? to be a member of the Ukrainian culture. Um, so I said, sort of tease this out a little bit because uh, that's part of this discussion because it's connecting or contrasting um, ethnic identity and culture with blending or right assimilation or not and also whatever this American culture thing is here. So well, here's an example of a writing prompt. Um, most of the writing prompts that I've seen um, are very much like this. You have a few sentences that identifies the, um, the topic. You have some directives that tell you what, tells you what to do, agree, disagree, argue, indicate, right? So those are the, the four different things here, agree, argue, indicate, those are three things. Um, Next, you have two positions that are in the main part of this essay that talks about uh, maintaining the link, right? That's one aspect. And the other one is blending in assimilation, right? The whole salad bowl versus melting pot concept. You may have heard that before. Uh, and the opening statement is there is no doubt that America is a melting pot. You could argue that this prompt says there's a, uh, America is a melting pot, yet you could argue, uh, you see it as being more of a salad bowl, meaning that all the ethnic uh, identities, specific races, nationalities are separate and they're not blending together. Anyway, so I'm spending a little bit of time on this, but I think it's important you take a look at a running prompt and take it apart. You may also want to use this um, example as a way of developing your own writing prompt when you write your essays by looking at the problem, now its position and contrast or connection to other um, statements being made about that problem and what you want to do in your own essay. You can use this, this verbiage that's on the screen right now to design your own thesis statement, right? Just like in high school where you take your, you know, your statement and you flip it into a question uh, to make it more of an argument. Anyway, so that's an example. Okay, so I talked about this before, the intro of the thesis, you got the body paragraphs with specific examples and you have a conclusion. Uh, so there's some other prompts here, but I'll, I'll add this into the, this here, so let me, I'll add this into
I'm not sure what that is. So let's try it again. There it is. Okay, great. Okay, so that's pretty good. That's a, that's a, a fair amount of work to, to, to look at. And hopefully that's been helpful. Um, I'll stop here. If you have any questions, give me a holler and um, I'll respond as quickly as possible. Thank you so much for your time. Have a great weekend. See ya. Bye.